Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a quick little knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Concept Corvid M, or Medium Corvid. You probably know that there is a Mini Corvid, which is a teeny tiny little thing, and then there's an XL Corvid, which is a gigantic hulking monstrosity of a knife. They're all available right now as far as I know, and I'll link them right down below. This is a really fun knife, and the Corvid is one of Concept's most popular models. I'm gonna save some people some time. If you've ever looked at the Corvid and thought, well, the Mini's too small and the big one is absolutely gigantic, do they make one in between? Yes, they do. And this is the answer to everything that you want. It is uh, more carryable and it's still very reasonable at $65. I'm gonna talk all about that and why I think that, but if you wanna check this knife out or the big one or the little one, I'm gonna link everything right down below so that you can do that in the description. Uh, it does help my channel and use my links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Concept for sending this to me for review and please make sure to follow Follow me on Instagram at metal underscore concept. Uh, concept. <laughs> Complex. <laughs> the brand is messing me up today. All right. So the overall length of the medium Corvid is coming in at six and a quarter inches. Blade length is coming in at two and a half inches, which is good for legal reasons for some people. And your blade length is coming in at two and a quarter. We're just gonna do a couple size comparisons today. We're not gonna get too in depth here because this is a pretty simple review. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and Model 2, you can see here that the Corvid M has some presence, but it's still shorter than the Rat 2. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There you go. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Still shorter than the Para 3. And last but not least, let's go ahead and do the Benchmade bug out. So it is shorter, but fatter than all of them. How's the action? It's about what you'd expect. Concept knives are made in China. Concept, uh, the OEM concept does a really, really good job. They are definitely amidst some of the other leading high-end Chinese OEMs. So what you're getting is absolutely premium execution. The design itself is a little bit awkward, but the execution of all the materials, right? All the finishes, all the chamfering, it's all there. The detent is definitely... I wouldn't say heavy, it's on the heavier side, but you have a nice long flipper tab that's been reasonably knocked down and it's also reasonably shaped, so you are gonna easily be able to, uh, you know, flip it. The thumb studs are a little bit awkward. I mean, the thing is kind of a short, fat, little choppy boy, right? So getting your fingers in exactly the right place to manipulate those thumb studs can be a little bit tricky. Once you have it down, you should be good to go. Uh, reverse flicking it, like I said, the detent is on the heavier side for a knife of this size and shape. So you're just gonna kinda have to mess with it until it works for you. You can use the fuller to reverse flick it. You really have to get the meat of your finger in there, but you can do it. This is kind of fidgety. Every now and then you're gonna slip off of that flipper tab because the detent can feel a little bit strong. Uh, the lock bar is also a little bit stiff, but fortunately there is a nice big relief cut right there so you can approach this from the side. Um, I don't know why I said it like that. What were you implying, Metal Complex? Moving on, uh, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of stiff, but you, you can still get in there and disengage it is what I'm saying. So the actual pivot action is, it takes a little bit of encouragement, but it's nice and consistent, and over time it will probably continue to smooth up. Carry profile, length and height up against the Spyderco, sp 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 Spyderco Para 3. You can see it's about the same thickness. Length and height. Did I say carry profile thickness or did I say length and height? I don't know. I get mixed up. Yeah, it's definitely shorter than both, but uh, this uh, gigantic uh, peak, uh, it's way taller. Uh, the, the entire mass and size of the object. I mean, it, I, you could in some ways call this compact and, and uh, you know, some people are going to put this in your pocket and just be like, God, it takes up so much room this way, right? It just kind of depends on what you're used to. But most people will notice this height right here. Uh, and you'll notice it a lot more if you go for the gigantic one, which I also have a review on along with the small one. You can check those out if you want to. Um, let's do uh, weight. We are looking at 154 cm. Wonderful, by the way. Love 154 cm for the blade steel. Uh, and then layer G10, black and green, looks pretty good. And then we have full milled out steel liners you can see in there. So weight is, is it on? Yeah, it is. Weight is coming in at a whopping 4.13 ounces, which is quite a bit for a knife of this length. There is a lot of overall knife here though. So 
four ounce object. Ratios are nowhere near perfect, but you know, it's like the people who are interested in this are probably not overly concerned with min maxing, right? When it comes to like weight and blade ratio and all of that. So do with that information what you will. It will be interpreted dip differently depending on who you are and what your preferences are. Um, let's do a hardware check. Uh, get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. The pivot is, ooh, wait, am I wrong? Is that a T10? It just feels kind of loosey-goosey with that T8 in there. Let's try a T10. Yep, sorry, it's a T10. And then your body screws are... T8, which is fantastic. The pocket clip screws are T6, that's okay. Can't always get what you want. Minimal hardware though, and the fasteners that really matter, the ones that you'll be adjusting the most, are a larger size, which is something that I very much prefer. And Concept seems to do a pretty good job of that. So, thank you very much, Concept. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Uh, there we go, blade stock thickness on the Corvid M or Corvid Medium coming in at 118, it's probably 120 thousandths, right about what I expected there. All right, so this is a little cleaver, and I gotta be honest with you, cleaver blades are less utilitarian than, uh, like, like my favorite EDC blades are gonna be uh, traditional drop point, uh, sheep's foot, and worn cliff. Um, with there being a distinct tip and uh, either a straight edge or a curved edge, um, gen you know, generally speaking, those knives are going to be more uh, versatile than a cleaver style blade. For the most part, people who buy cleaver style blades are just in it because it looks cool. And there's no shame in admitting that, right? There's going to be a whole bunch of people down in the comments section, no matter what I say, I can't stop them who are gonna have lengthy justifications for this specific blade shape. Some people are gonna say food prep. No, uh, doesn't work very well for food prep because laying it down flat, the first part of the blade that actually contacts the surface is about in the middle. You want it to be at the back for food prep. Would have been great for that had they removed the flipper tab. It actually would have worked pretty well. You can still force it into that roll. In fact, you can force it into a lot of rolls, right? It does not have to be a perfect cutting tool. Sometimes things can just be fun for the sake of being fun, and that's exactly what the Corvid is. So, uh, day to day, this blade shape is going to cause more problems than it solves. If you need something cut quickly or sliced, it will do that. If you need something punctured, it can kind of do that, but it's kind of problematic. The shape of the blade also also makes the carry profile taller, which just creates an issue, right? I mean, at the end of the day, a blade like this, I mean, even when we're talking about closer to the same cutting edge, it's just going to be all the way around better. But that's okay, right? It doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect. The truth is, is that the Corvid is kind of cool, and it stands out uh, amidst a sea of other similar designs right now, right? For a long time, the cleaver style, you know, flipper blades were, they were everywhere. For some reason, and I think it's probably how the fuller ends at this swedge right here, this guy just completes that that look, right? It's why it's so popular. I also like the two little lines in here. I think this is the best looking variant of this knife with the forest green, black G10, uh, and then the uh, black blade. I just think, I don't know why, I just think it looks really, really good. The choil is a real choil, which means you can get in there. You can choke up on this bad boy. And this is definitely the most comfortable position. If you needed to do a little bit of detailed work, yeah, you can do it with this knife. In fact, I mean, this knife is, is going to be just fine. I'm not saying, I was saying like, oh, it's, I, I was implying that the, that the blade was complete and total novelty and that the only reason, the only reason to carry this is just for how it looks. No, it definitely is still sharp enough to cut and slice and do things that you would expect of it, right? I mean, if you want to EDC this, this is the best version of this knife. The big one, ha ha ha, fun, but it's also insanely cumbersome. The little one, ha ha ha, fun, you might lose it, right? It, this one, it's got enough presence, you're not gonna lose it. It's not nearly as cumbersome as the big one, right? And everything just makes a little bit more sense. Like dimensionally, it just makes a little more sense. But again, up against something like this, no contest. Uh, it's just a more, the Rat 2 is just a more practical knife, right? But it'll still do it. The thumb stud is still, 
just a tiny bit in the cutting path, but no big deal. This still has enough cutting edge that most people, not everyone, professional pineapple choppers, most people will get by day to day with just this much cutting edge, right? If you don't like knives of this size, I don't know why you're still watching because we did the specs, right? Um, but uh, for most people day to day, it's gonna be just fine. I do appreciate you can choke up. Ergonomically, it's all right. It feels like you're holding an angry rectangle. Uh, the edges are knocked down, but there's enough of these little ledges and you know how we transition from one ledge to another that you're gonna feel it. That clip is okay. It's just a little bit long for this knife. That spoon edge comes past the middle of the handle. So whether you are back here, which is not comfortable at all, it's very cramped and angry rectangly and there's only three fingers worth of grip. Up here it's better, but it's still a C plus B minus at best. Um, it, a lot of that is really overshadowed by the presence of this thing. I and mean, it's just a cool knife. If you show this to people, right? And you know, any anybody who carries a knife, like we, we like to we like to show our knives to other people who like knives, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Most people are gonna go, oh cool, right? Uh, it's just it's neat. It's neat looking. You don't see a lot of these, I mean in the knife world online, yeah, you see them all the time, but just day to day, you don't see a lot of stuff like this, so it's always a fun conversation piece. And it has a nice snap to it, a nice authoritative, that word always cracks me up, right? Like you're, is that implying that like when we flip our knives in a public setting, we are announcing our authority in this public setting, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's not, I wouldn't want to draw attention to myself that way. And I don't like to draw attention to myself in public in any way, but that would definitely not be the way I would do it. But for those of you who do like the snap, it, it does have the authoritative snap, right? Feels good, looks good. There's jimping up here, that's great. I like this little notch back here on the back of the blade too. Uh, just, uh, it's nice, you know? The tip right here is basically just good enough to get into a package. It's not, it doesn't offer anywhere near the same type of utility as a classic drop point, uh, Warncliffe, or even sheep's foot style blade. But there you go, you know? Do with that what you will. Um, there is a lanyard hole. Lanyard people, rejoice. Yay, you can attach a gaudy lanyard to it if you want. Sorry, I shouldn't judge you, right? <laughs> Sorry. All seven or eight of them that are left. No, it, it's been a long time though now. I've been saying seven or eight. There's probably only three or four left. All right, I'm done. The depth of this pocket clip actually allows um, all of the knife to hide. Uh, and let me demonstrate here by using my card. When you are carrying this knife, this is all you're gonna see, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> the angle, like they did that just right so that the, all of this would be hidden underneath the pocket. And I think that's cool because having this much sticking out of your pocket would be annoying. The pocket clip is pretty good. It is not recessed and the screws are not recessed. It would have been nice if they could just do one at least, but they didn't. There's also no position for lefties. Sorry, lefties, the Corvid does not care about you apparently. This is peel ply texture G10, but it's not super aggressive. It'll take quite a while for it to fray your pants, but it definitely will over time. The bill is nice and spoon shaped. I appreciate that they did that. It's not some pointy, crazy, goose faced thing. Uh, it's also not super tall. It will rise, it's got enough of a rise to meet most pocket seam thicknesses, but it's not, you know, it's not crazy. So that's good. Um, we have adjustment heads on both sides, most likely a free spinning pivot. It's not a big deal if you have two um, drivers, but it's kind of annoying. You have to have two drivers, right? There is a uh, stop pin that's located internally and it actually is on, you can see it reflecting right there. It's actually attached to the blade riding on channels on the liners. That's a good way to do that. I really like that. Uh, nice and strong without sacrificing, you know, solidity in the lockup. Uh, no blade play up, down, left, or right. No, um, surprisingly, there is no double clutch on this knife. It's close, but there isn't. No double clutch. Ouch. Uh, there is no pivot lash, and there's a nice heavy click into the closed position. Slightly off-center blade, but I got to be honest with you. This knife was perfectly centered when I got it, and I have flipped the crap out of it. So it's most likely just needing to be readjusted on the pivot. Um, Lockup is coming in at maybe 25 or so percent. So how much is this knife? 
65 bucks. Makes it a budget knife. This knife is a very cool looking and fun, you know, it, it's got a cool and fun looking aesthetic, right? Uh, it is far from the most utilitarian thing that you can find. I mean, seriously, at the $65 price point, there are hundreds, if not thousands of choices out there that are just plain better in terms of carry profile, blade geometry, uh, just general cutting utility, right? There's a lot of elements that are more convenient. But if you don't care about that, which truthfully, I don't always care about that. I don't need to be carrying exactly the right knife for where I'm going. I just, I want something that's going to do what I'm going to need it to do. And I want it to be fun for, you know, I, I, I want to enjoy it. I mean, this is, this is a knife that every time you carry it, you're going to stop and go, this is cool, right? And then everybody you show it to is going to be the same way. I really like that Concept decided to make a crazy, gigantic one and then make a teeny, tiny one and then go, okay, we'll make one that's more reasonably sized for people who just like the look. It was smart. 65 bucks for 154cm and G10 in general, like if we're just going on, you know, materials on paper, that's pretty good. Like, honestly, I, I think this is super well-priced. I, I like this. And I think, you know, if, if for no other reason than just to entertain yourself, pick this up. Uh, generally speaking, it's, I'm not going to openly recommend it to like, it, like if you're a new person looking for an extremely utilitarian folder, I've got a million other things I can recommend. And they're in a playlist called uh, Cheap Knives I Like. They're all under 75 bucks. And there's a ton of them in there. Uh, but this is fun. So while I'm not including it on my recommended knives playlist, it is still something that I think is fun and a lot of people will enjoy. So I'm going to include it on my cheap knives I like playlist. Anybody who decides to spend the money on this, once you get it, it's going to put a smile on your face. It just will. This is a smart move by concept. I like this one. It's, it's just, it's fun, right? Sometimes it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. That's going to be pretty much it. Like I said, links for this guy alongside its gigantic older brother and its itty bitty teeny tiny little baby brother uh, will be right down in the description so you guys can check them out if you want. Thanks again to Concept, if I didn't say it already, for sending this in for review. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore com, uh, complex. God, I almost did it again. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.